Hello there. Welcome to Sintoni's Art Productions. Today we'll be making winter camouflage for early war 1941 to 42. So without further ado, let's get into it. How's it going guys? Antonio's Art Productions here. So today, since we do have a bit of snow, decided to make a little winter camo video. So uh, we're going to use uh, sheets, bed sheets, curtains, and pillowcases. Uh, this was done, and this was definitely unit dependent during the early years of the war. So probably that first winter, 1941 into 42 before they started to issue and produce winter camouflage patterns which were issued later in the war like 42 to the end of the war 45 so the Russians were really good at camouflage and they knew they had some experience from the winter war hey, kitty. from the winter war 1939 against the Finnish or the Finns uh, in Finland, they were very good at camouflage, too. And that's where the Russians, the Soviets, I should say, they learned that from them because they were getting massacred because they stuck out like sore thumbs with their green and brown wool uniforms. They're easy to pick off by snipers, one of them being Samoy Haya. I probably butchered that name, but the White Death, in other words, he killed, I don't know what it was, 500 or 700. Soviets, I believe, but he was very good at camouflaging himself. He would even go as far as putting snow in his mouth. So, the Soviets learned their lesson from the Winter War and started to issue out winter camouflage or white camouflage for their soldiers. So, the Germans hadn't really fought too many winter warfare battles. I mean, there was very static fighting and there wasn't much fighting during the winter in World War One, so they haven't really had any experience, especially with the Russian winters, which were very severe, very cold, very snowy. So the first year they were having the same problems the Soviets did during the Winter War, which was they being picked off against the landscape. So some of them were issued winter covers, like smocks, but that really wasn't that common early on in the war. So a lot of them were making makeshift things. They'd steal bed sheets, curtains, pillowcases, basically anything that they could that was white. And then they would fashion that over their helmets. They would fashion that over their uh, tunics and their mantles. Hold on, kitty. I'm trying to do a video here. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, I have a few pictures I'll put on the video here, just kind of overlay while I'm talking. But for our one, or for our Boys No More series, we're following the Gross Deutschland division. Uh, I have a picture of a machine gun squad that I'm going to base this off for as far as helmets go and the uh, tunic cover. So we're going to get into it here. So. Let's get to that. I'll get this cat out of the way because she's really needy right now. We'll get into it. Okay, guys. I have some pillowcases, some sheets, and some uh, uh, curtains, and also a cat. That's very beneficial. You need your cat while you're doing your camouflaging. And then I have a helmet that we will camouflage, and then I also have some gear that I will not camouflage, but I just have it up there for, uh, I will get into full kit and go outside and show you guys what that looks like. Okay, uh, we're going to start with the helmet. So I've got a original Finnish helmet here. It's pretty beat up, so that's okay. Got it for a good price. And they're, they use the same uh, helmet. 
helmet presses as the German ones during World War II. So this is one of the two Finnish helmets that I have. And then I think I'm going to grab this pillowcase right Oh, I guess it, got me t it gave me two pillowcases. So here's a pillowcase. And I'm going to take my trusty scissors here. And this doesn't really have to be any specific way. You can have, you can see pictures of guys with huge ones, pictures of guys with just the helmet outline. It's really anything that camouflage and breaks up the silhouette of your helmet. So I'm just going to give myself some real estate here. And a disclaimer, uh, well first off, careful playing with scissors. You can cut yourself. Don't run with scissors either. And then second off, don't just go and take your sheets off your parents' bed or your, your wife's bed or your husband's bed. So you might get yelled at. So make sure you are okay to cut the sheets up that you are going to make your camouflage out of. You don't want to cause any headaches. So I will cut down the seam and just spread this out a little bit. And don't worry if it rips. I'm sure that was done as well. Okay. Alright, so now we have this. So this is pretty good here. I'm going to rip this some more. So I think, yeah, we can work with this or we could work with this. So this is pretty, pretty small piece here. So I think I'm going to work with this first piece here. And I'm just going to cut off this bit here where the seam is. Okay, so now I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to put it on the helmet. And this is what we're looking at here as far as the camo goes. So I think it's a little big, so I'm going to rip it down just a little bit. But if you want it that big, that is fine. There's definitely pictures out there that show it. I'm going to cut kind of a circular pattern here. That doesn't have to be a great cut. I wasn't very good at cutting at school, so they had to give me the safety scissors, but that is okay. Safety scissors are better than no scissors, I say. Okay, well, here's a smaller piece. I think I'm going to go with that. I'm going to lay that over my helmet. Kind of situate it how I want to. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that, like that. Okay, so a lot of the times soldiers would cut up inner tubes off of tires. So I have an inner tube right here. I cut it up from a tire myself. And this would be good for attaching foil that such as trees, sticks, grass. <laughs> Sorry, not trees. That'd be a pretty impressive. Uh, good for grass, uh, I guess, twigs and leaves to the helmet. But it's also good for attaching your winter camouflage to your helmet as well. So if I can do this without looking like an idiot, I will stretch this around here. You can also use twill, string, whatever you could find to attach your helmet cover. And then once you have this in place, you can move it to your liking. Try not to lose your inner tube. If you're watching this, you can definitely cut bigger inner tubes. Mine was very tiny. Pull this down the side. And I think I want, I don't got much back here, so I'm going to pull it some more. Because I want more in the back rather than more in the front. So yeah, it's basically all about working it back and forth 
to your liking. Don't be afraid of messing up. Like Bob Ross used to say, they're not mistakes. And I'm not a very good Bob Ross person, but he was a good man. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. So this is what we got so far, as you can see. So I'll uh, put it on just for example. So as you can see, we have the inner tube on top, well, somewhere up here, and then this camouflage made out of the pillowcase. So I think I'm gonna make, let's, uh, let's make a, this one for over the tunic and the mantle here. to a thrift store and I just got a bunch of white curtains, bed sheets, and pillowcases. So you can see that this is a, a decent sized curtain. So we could do it a few ways. Could cut a hole in the middle. But I think I want to make this into two, so I think I'm going to cut it down the middle. You know what? I think I'm just going to cut a hole in the middle. I think this is a pretty good size for a smock, but we'll play around with it. So I'm going to find the middle. I'm going to fold it in half without holding the scissors in my hand, because safety comes first. No emergency room visits today. Okay. So, I'm going to find my middle, and then I'm going to make a cut. And again, your cut doesn't have to be immaculate. It's whatever works for you. Remember, you're being you're in a field environment, so you just are trying to get some camouflage to avoid some Soviet lead. Okay, so now that we have this cut, we can try it on, and this is all about trial and error. So I'm pretty happy with this. I will just cut off the little little nubbies on the back here and we'll mend that up a little bit and then we will try on the belt to see what it looks like okay so let's doll this up a little bit more let's get rid of these nubs And you can even use sheets with patterns too. You can study up uh, different patterns from the Ostfront, so any of the countries that were there. Or just look up 1940s sheet patterns. You should be good to go. So, we'll try this on again. Look like a ghost on Halloween. So we will grab our nifty belt here. And see how bad I put this back together. Okay, there we go. So you're going to wrap it around, so it would be the top layer. Okay, 
So this is one way that you could do it. I think I'll make a couple, another example as well, but this would be a camouflage for you. And hopefully I'm not cut out on the top, but this is a pretty basic, easy, quick camouflaging for winter. Okay guys, so here's what it looks like out in the snow. Uh, I got my full kit on here, so I got a, the mantle on, the pants, the boots, uh, some gloves, and here's the helmet. I'll just kind of do a churn. I see you can do it however you would like, because it is your camouflage pattern. Remember, it is uniform dependent. So if you are a reenactor, I would definitely ask your unit first. They might provide some more details on the specific unit that you're portraying. Uh, if you're a filmmaker, like we are, have fun with it. And I guess you guys can all have fun with it, depending on what it's for. But just, as always, make sure you guys are doing your research. We are portraying real people and real events. But on the other note, always have fun and be creative. So until next guy, or until next time, you guys stay tuned.